Okay, so let's take a look at what something we call a compound inequality. A compound inequality is just two inequalities smushed together. And what it shows is it shows that numbers lie between two fixed values. For example, we have negative 5 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 8. So what that means is, if we look at a number line, here's negative 5 and 8's over here. This compound inequality is telling us that x represents all the numbers that are strictly less than 8 but greater than or equal to negative 5. So we could shade it this way. And any number that is negative 5 or bigger or strictly smaller than 8 would be a solution to this compound inequality. So you can think of it really as two inequalities sort of put together. We have negative 5 is less than or equal to x, and we have x is less than 8. And instead of solving them separately, we're going to solve them together and look at the solution to both at the same time. So let's look at a couple of examples. Our first example says negative 3 is less than or equal to 4x plus 5, which is less than 17. So we're going to solve it the same way we solve any inequality, we're just actually going to be solving 2 at the same time. So if we look at this, the f we're trying to get x all by itself in the middle. So the first thing we'll do is subtract 5 from that middle quantity, which means we also need to subtract 5 from both end quantities. That will give us negative 8 is less than or equal to 4x, which is less than 12. And we're trying to solve to isolate x. So if we divide by 4 in the center quantity, that will give us x. But we also need to divide the 12 by 4 and the negative 8 by 4, positive 4. So negative 8 divided by 4 will give us negative 2, less than or equal to x. Bring down the signs, and we have a 3 here. So the solution to our original problem is all the numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 2 and less than 3. So if we graph that, what we're looking at is here's our negative 2 and here's our 3. And so we want the numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 2. So we'll put a closed circle on negative 2. And we want to be strictly less than 3, so we'll have an open circle on 3. And we'll, take, we'll shade to indicate all the numbers between those two values are the solution to this inequality. Let's try another example. We have negative 4 is less than negative 2 times x minus 1, less than or equal to 4. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is let's divide through by negative 2. So if we divide by negative 2 in all three places, the first thing we need to remember is we're dividing through by a negative quantity. This is going to change the direction of our inequality. So negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. And we're going to change the direction of the inequality. In the center, we now have x minus 1. And we're going to change the direction of this inequality. We're going to get a negative 2 over here. So I'm just going to rewrite it so that we're going from smallest to biggest. So this is negative 2 less than or equal to x minus 1 less than positive 2. And we're solving for x. So we're going to add 1 to the center quantity. And we need to add 1 to all the other areas also. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, less than or equal to x. Strictly less than 2 plus 1 is 3. So this appears to be our solution. So on the number line, our boundary numbers are negative 1 and 3. And I'm going to use the parentheses and square brackets this time. I want to include negative 1, so that's going to get a square bracket on negative 1. And I don't want to include the 3, so I'll use a parenthesis there. And I will shade in between because those are all the values of x that are greater than or equal to negative 1 or strictly less than 3. Once again, it's your turn. Here are three problems. I want you to solve the inequality and give a number line graph of the solutions.